Alright, hey guys. <clears throat> I want to do a video, a good video, I guess, on this little baby death stalker scorpion that we got oh, back a few months ago. It's getting a lot bigger, it's a lot easier to see with the camera. We just moved them into the big enclosure, like always. Isaiah is assisting me. <clears throat> he might give some two cents. So, that's the death stalker. It's uh, bolted twice in its third instar. It is the Leurus Quinquestriatus, which translates into the five side, five stripe smooth tail. It's in a Boothide family. It also can go by the Palestinian yellow scorpion, um, the Nagab desert scorpion. I don't know, I can't remember all that stuff. There's another one, um, Derman Scorpion, I think. But that's it. It's in North Africa. Middle East is its natural habitat. It's going to get about three inches long or so. Altogether, still pretty small baby. Still eating small crickets. Like that little guy right there. He'll eat that eventually. He's pretty gut loaded right now, so he's not really that hungry. Ah. I've talked about their venom before. Their venom has chlorotoxin, uh, psilotoxin, agatoxins, types 1, 2, and 3, and then another one, uh, what's it, uh, cherubotoxin. But this thing is pretty dangerous. It is a baby, but it's very venomous, one of the most venomous in the world. Some say it's in the top five. I've actually seen it where it's either one or two depending on the LD50 scale that they use on mice. Um, the chlorotoxin, they've learned that they can use that to paint the cells in the brain tumor and they can paint up to 200 brain cells to see where the tumor is. Now with an MRI you have to have 500,000 brain cells that are infected in order for it to show up so this thing can be very useful. And also they said that, um, I forget which one it was, it might still be the chlorotoxin, but it helps the body produce insulin. So there's a lot of things with this, and they can help with tumors, and they can help with diabetics. That's why if you're killing snakes, spiders, scorpions, arthropods, any of the creepy crawlies that live around your house, you're kind of a jerk. You don't want to do that because they all serve a purpose, just like burning leaves in the fall. When you burn your entire yard, say you burn a quarter of an acre, you're essentially burning down Los Angeles for an entire ecosystem. I mean, there's salamanders, there's different kinds of bugs and spiders, uh, funguses, a lot of stuff that grows that's necessary. Uh, Israel had a study. They um, said that once you get stung, you show a lot of symptoms of pancreatitis, actually. And that's where part of the insulin comes in, but there's a good part of the toxin and there's a bad part of the toxin. And there's always the risk of anaphylactic shock because you're allergic to it. So this is not something that a beginner should have. This is not something that you should try to handle. This is not an emperor scorpion or Asian forest floor or a red claw. It's, this is a dangerous scorpion. And one way to kind of eyeball dangerous scorpions is you can see that his claws, which is what's called his pedipalps, are they're very small. That means his sting has to be strong because he can't hold him down compared to like the Asian forest floor scorpion that actually can hold its prey down because it has very meaty claws, also like the emperor scorpion. Uh, my little blast to the government is the FDA will not approve the two anti-venoms in America for this. Now they have an edible one, but it's not going to work as fast as intravenous. And it also takes large doses of the intravenous anti-venom because their venom wrecked. It's weird. He's gotten a lot faster than he, what he was when he was younger. He's a lot more active. Now, an active scorpion is a healthy scorpion. I just put him in his enclosure today. He's kind of checking things out. I hope he eats that cricket soon, but uh, I seen him eating a large cricket leg yesterday. So, he should be pretty full. He looks fat and healthy. So... We're going to wrap this up. You got anything to say about the scorpions, Isaiah? You can't talk with that.
Do I need the lid? Can I have the lid back? I guess not. So, there's our good video on the Deathstalker Scorpion. Do not buy one of these if you've never handled animals before. This is really something that is more, I'm not going to say expert, but it takes a lot more being careful. Um, mimicking the Middle East, it's not too hard. What I do for my substrate, we just mix some, uh, this regular soil that you get from the pet store with some sand. You mix it real good, wet it down, it lets them burrow. Uh, we got an arrowhead there, we have some just various rocks and pieces of driftwood that have holes in them so they can hide because they are nocturnal, or nocturnal hunters. So they do like to hide during the day. And that's the Death Stalker Scorpion. If I miss anything, somebody can just let me know. If you want to find more information about it, you can message me. There's plenty on Google and YouTube. Uh, hopefully I can try to breed this here in a couple of years. We're going to try to get another one and have some more babies. So we're going to end the video there. Remember, curiosity makes you smarter. Um, thank you for checking out the YouTube page, and we will see you next time.